All right, welcome back to the Celtics Lab podcast. I'm your host, Cameron tubbitz Bay. I'm joined by Dr. Alex, oh, Dr. Justin Quinn, and maybe soon to be Dr. Alex Goldberg. Alex, you can that's be Dr. Good, that's a few years off, I think. We'll see. Okay, we'll, we'll keep you posted. <laughs> and um, uh, Dr. Joe Pavon, why not? No, no. I, show. <laughs> you don't have to worry about that with me. No, no. <laughs> All right. How's uh, it going, guys? Good, yeah. good. Uh, Josue, you come to us from heavy.com and you're our brethren at CLNS Media. You can find Josue over at the Cedric Maxwell podcast and a whole bunch of other programming for that matter. Um, this is the Celtics Lab podcast brought to you by Bet Online. And today, Josue, you're going to help us pick all defensive teams. And of course, that's going to be studded with Celtics, we think. Um, so that's what is on the agenda. That'll be in the lab portion of the programming. But first, let's do the news. And the news is good. We kind of got an update on Rob Williams, which is that he is progressing probably faster than we could have ever hoped. Um, This came within a few hours, maybe a day after Lonzo Ball had negative news about his own meniscus tear. So I personally personally am not feeling ready to feel uh, like I'm jumping out of my skin with joy. Uh, Josue, what's your temperature check on the Rob Williams situation? I mean, nothing's really changed, to be honest with you guys. I mean, it's 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 what it is, right? I mean, we were talking about a second round series. Uh, maybe you miss a game or two. Maybe he needs an extra week to ramp up or so. But depending on how you know fast the first round series is, it's really hard to tell, right? I mean, we, yeah. we're not even quite sure who they're going up against. And that's not to say that I don't like to sell his chances against the majority of the teams that have a good chance of, of being lined up but for a first round matchup. But with that being said, I mean, uh, Eme said it today. I mean, it's if anyone had any suspicion or crossing their fingers thinking that they, they may see Rob in a potential game six, game seven situation in, in the best of seven series in the first round, that, that's not going to happen. I mean, I think we all do that. So, um, yeah, I, I would say nothing's really changed. I, I don't know if my, my hopes have, have gone up or so, but I, I'm, I'm going to say they, they remain the same right now. Cool. Uh, Alex, Justin, anything you're feeling on the Rob front? I think that was pretty concise. I mean, I'm pretty hopeful he's going to come back, but I'm trying to keep the mindset that he isn't just because it's a very good chance that he might not be able to and to be mentally prepared as they should be as a team will just make life easier for me. So, Yeah, I think that's the right approach. Um, the C should be prepping for their first round matchup with whoever it is that they get with the assumption that Rob is not going to be available for that series. And then if he is available, hey, pleasant surprise, you have Rob back but um, they should not plan on it. I like that Ime seems like he's pretty dedicated to um, the Daniel Tice, Al Horford front line uh, going forward for these next few games. I think that's the right call and probably the closest to what they were running before. So uh, we'll see. It's it's good news. There's no other way to spin it. And I wouldn't want, wouldn't want to spin it any other way, but um, I do think we should temper our expectations a little bit. And for what it's worth, it's Wednesday evening. We have a Bulls game to get through. We have a Bucks game to get through. So we have no idea who the Celtics are going to play. We have no idea who they yeah. want to play. If they play the Raptors, there might not be any big men featured at all. So it might be a non-issue. Um, and we're not sure if uh, the vaccine stuff is going to be an issue. Uh, we do know that Juwan Morgan is out right now with COVID protocols. Um, the extent to that. I don't think is entirely clear. I know that he's had COVID before. I'm not sure reporting that he's uh, been vaccinated or not. The whole kerfuffle, just by any like opinion on last week's kind of vaccine gate that was or was not warranted. Uh, It's a little sketchy if I'm being completely honest with you guys. (laughs) I mean, (laughs) to to, to the Celtics' credit, they've they've maintained their stance from the very beginning, right? And that is, you know, we're not going to ask them. We can't tell them to do what what, what, what they think is right. And they, they are standing by that, obviously. And uh, for, for players to sort of plead the fifth, a couple of players saying, you know, Jalen Brown included. I mean, we're not even quite sure if Robert Williams, even though he isn't going to be available in the first round, we're not quite sure if he's vaccinated. So, I mean, you would like a little bit, a bit more transparency. But right. I, I think when you hear someone like Al Horford say that I will be ready for a potential first round matchup in Toronto or, you know, I, I'll be willing to play, you know, anywhere, I guess without saying the words, <laughs> you, that's somewhat comforting. But at the same time, I mean, if this does happen, if we, if we see a best of seven series between the Celtics and the Raptors, I mean, can you imagine uh, someone like Jalen Brown unable to play in Toronto? And like, that's not to say the Celtics are doomed, right? I, I think the Celtics would still have a good chance of knocking off a team like Toronto Raptors, but you're going to make it very, very interesting, especially that potential game six 
look, I don't even want to talk about this right now, but it is a yeah. possibility. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you know, it is it's definitely a possibility. And if that that does happen, well, the plot thickens, you know. I mean, someone's gonna have to people are gonna have to start pulling their, you know, pulling their cards or their vaccine cards, at least right. the proverbial proverbial vaccine cards. And um, right now the clock is ticking. I mean, look, if you guys do the math. You know, this would be the week to, to go get that go get that shot, right? If you're one right. of those guys that that's not vaccinated. No, that's true. Um, it's two weeks out from at least a J and J shot, I believe, is the policy. Uh, uh, we'll we'll perhaps get to some players that might be impacted by that when we talk about all defensive teams. At the very least, Juan Morgan seems to have COVID, and so there's still COVID in and around the Celtics locker room. So. Um, we don't need to do vaccine stuff today, but the, the quality of the shots wane. So if you haven't gotten your booster, go get your booster. And if you're eligible, go get that yeah. second booster and we can, we'll talk about that next time we need to, but anyways, it's definitely, and, definitely worth mentioning though. <laughs> it's definitely worth mentioning, right? <laughs> yeah. And I guess it's worth mentioning that the Celtics keep showing up on the injury report with, um, shaky knees. Just why, what's your level of concern there with all this, um, knee tendinopathy that keeps popping up? Um, in terms of you know guys like Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown, I'm not too concerned. Uh, you, you're hoping that's just a matter of them putting them on an injury report, just sort of nursing them, you know, to the finish line, so to speak. I mean, they they do get that extra few days off because they're not going to be participating in the playing tournament, which is you know different to what we saw last season. So that's sort of your reward for being a top mm-hmm. seed. But you also want to give these guys a little bit of rest. I mean, one of these games, you. you you're probably going to sit these guys, right? I mean, Emay's talked about it. Um, you're not quite sure which one he was asked today, uh, you know, before this Bulls game. And, and today he's saying you won't see – everyone should be – everyone who's available, who's healthy, is going to be in the picture. But we're not quite sure about the second night of a back-to-back, right, back-to-back set. So I, I, I would chalk it up to that. But obviously it's something to keep, an, uh, keep a close eye on, especially with, um, and, and, you know, some scary moments that happened in the last couple of games where – uh, Jalen Brown looked off the floor a little bit. Marcus Smart had to head back to the locker room a couple of times. So it's definitely something to keep an eye on, but I, I'm not, I'm not really concerned. I mean, as the old saying goes, I mean, I mean, who, who's a 100% towards the end of the season. I mean, so we'll, we'll have to wait and see though. Can I just say that I would really like to say, to see Ime pulling the players when there is a double digit lead in the fourth quarter yeah. Anything over like 15 points, just just pull them. It's okay. It's okay. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Especially at this at this stage in the, in the regular season. Yeah, for sure. I, I mean, I'll say that I still have like a little bit of scar tissue from how poor the fourth quarters went in the first half of the season. So I could understand where he's coming from. But yeah, put the put the starters in bubble wrap, please. I, I don't care about the seating. <laughs> I care about starting the playoffs. All right. Uh, a little bit more news and then we'll we'll drop into the lab. The past few games have been kind of Jekyll and Hyde, big losses to Toronto and Miami, a kind of narrow or kind of ugly win against Indiana, and then a huge win over Washington, according to uh, Sean Grandy, the most efficient win of the Steven Zadoka era. Joe Sway, what are you buying? What are you selling from the past like two weeks of Celtics basketball? Um, I'm buying them trying to revamp their defensive identity. Um, they, even though they they did you know blow those guys out, you know the, the Wizards game, the, the Indiana Pacers game I thought was interesting, especially in the fourth quarter. This team has to know, it has to develop that strength again. And let's be real. They're not going to be able to be the same defensive team that they were with Rob in the mix. It's just not going to happen. But what you what you do have is you have a, what, what we called uh, on this Southern's post game show, at least what I called, uh, an insurance policy on Rob Williams. And right now you're not going to have to use it for the entire duration of your run, right, which is, which is, a, which is good news last week when you found out exactly – how long he's going to be out. And that's Daniel Tice. You know, you trade it for someone like Daniel Tice who can, who can, you know, guard spaces throughout the floor. Not quite the same as Rob Williams. Not going to block shots the way he did, but he's a good defender. And he also gives you a little bit more range on the offensive end of the floor, right? He got that three-point shot. He can step into that three-point arc. He's going to get that look a lot. So um, I just think this is a good opportunity. For, this has been a good opportunity for them to just sort of regroup, you know, find their way w- without Rob and put make sure everyone's on the exact same page and, and you, th- i think that's a big reason why you don't see email stretching this 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 rotation right now i, I mean aaron neesmith sort of had a, a tryout so to speak in those couple of weeks and it, right now he's just not in it right now and, and that's fine if, if you're if you're the Celtics, if you're that second unit you're hoping that guys like grant and and um and pritchard who, who's been giving you a spark offensively you know coming off the bench you know those two guys can, can continue to do that and of course dwight white you know uh, Derek white excuse me 
uh, someone that can do a little bit of both, you know, on, 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 while being your secondary playmaker as well, you know. So the Suns do have a lot going for them. I mean, they're not the same team defensively without Rob. But again, I mean, you had this time against playoff caliber teams to sort of figure those figure that part out, especially when it comes to the fourth quarter defense. Alex, Justin, anything you've been sitting on the past few days? You know, I know that this is a thing that I've talked about a lot on my time on this podcast uh, and particularly on this player's time on the Boston Celtics. But given the circumstances that you just laid out, Josue, um, I think this is also a perfect opportunity for the Celtics to see what they have in Luke Cornett as their deep bench center. <laughs> I know that oh, Luke Cornett man. has got all sorts of issues, blah, 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 blah. But I mean, you know, there's three games left in the regular season. If you're trying to get dudes healthy, Daniel Tice has already established himself as a pretty important piece for this team. And if Daniel Tice were to, um, I'm not knock on wood here. If, Don't if even Daniel say Tice that. were to uh, <laughs> miss any the same. time, if, if Daniel Tice were to miss any time in the playoffs, that would be an absolutely disastrous blow for the Celtics. So I would love to see them at least give Cornette like a, you know eight minutes, nine minutes there, and accept the possibility that in doing so you might uh, encounter some blown leads here or there. Um, I realize that this is a stretch of the season where. The, uh, seating is important, but at the same time, you got to get everybody who could possibly be playing in the playoffs ready to play. And uh, I think giving giving the depth pieces a little bit of run here and there might actually be a, a nice idea for these last three. Not much else to add to that other than I expected them to take a little bit of time to exactly what Josue was saying, uh, find the defense again, really, with with Daniel Tice as the linchpin instead. And he has done a surprisingly good job. I mean, he's even catching lobs, which I didn't really expect. Yeah, he is. Yeah, and he's he's like shooting. A couple of those bags, just a couple. And and (laughs) he's shooting the three way more confidence than at the end of his last stint. Like, he just looked broken at the end of his last stint. And, like, now he's just, like, stepping right into him, launching him, and they're going in, which is, you know, great. All right. Uh, One last thing, and then we'll hop into the lab. Everyone, take off your Celtics hat. Put it aside. Put on your agnostic media hat. Is anyone, I don't think any of us have a vote. Is anyone not thinking they would vote for Marcus Smart for Defensive Player of the Year? All right. Um, so let's, I'm going to do something that I would do in my classroom. <laughs> uh, Joe Sway, make the case that Marcus Smart is not the Defensive Player of the Year. Is not Defensive Player of the Year. Um, I guess the easiest route would say the impact of Robert Williams, right? What he means to the defense in the front court, uh, the, the fact that these guys can switch everything, you know, and, and be all right because you have someone like that that can guard the perimeter. He's come a long way. But outside of that, I mean, that, that's it. I mean, I don't know any other way to, to, to really, like, that's my only concern, especially for people who, who are still sort of like, uh, Marcus was still trying to figure out his way as a point guard. I, I think if you look at his game, all around, I mean, he's this is clearly his, the best season of his career. So, I mean, that being said, I, I just think when you look at the guys, the the the, 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 the usual suspects for this for this uh, award, yeah, they've missed a bunch of games, but um, you know, I don't know. That's the best I could do, man. <laughs> like, honestly, all right, well, I mean, I- you could I could talk about Gobert. You know, I could talk about. Uh, with, I don't know. Like you can go the usual suspect route, but then you, you just feel like you were sort of forcing the, forcing the, uh, your, your, your argument, you know, it just doesn't even fit. I don't know. What, I mean, what do you guys got? It's, it's also a narrative based award and smart is doing a great job at running this narrative. Um, Alex did a really nice job of changing hats. I let's replay the tape. Really, really bought the performance, Alex. Um, oh man. Make well, the case. What do you say? I, I, you, say? I, you know, here's what I'd have to say, Cam. Obviously, Marcus Smart cannot be the defensive player of the year because Rudy Gobert is the defensive player of the year. And he has been for, you know, the past, what, four seasons Time running, putting Norton. him up with Hakeem Olajuwon and Dikembe right. Mutombo is one of the great defenders of all time. All the advanced metrics suggest that Rudy Gobert is far and away the best defender on in the league and has been for some time. And the fact that all of these other NBA players don't seem to fear him at all in critical matchups is totally meaningless. Uh, you know, the fact that the Utah Jazz <laughs> defense is collapsing at the seams when he's on the floor recently is totally irrelevant. Uh, all of the stats indicate that he's far and away the best defensive player on the NBA. And you're stupid if you believe otherwise. Well regarding, 
regarding the narrative aspect, everyone's always saying, well, he's just getting votes because he's talking about how the narrative, but they, they, no one really, except for a few people here and there, uh, are talking about what he said after that. Like, why can't a guard be defensive player of the year? He immediately said, we stop all the rim attempts that you're saying we are not addressing, right? Like the, the people mm. say he's not a rim protector. That's the most important thing. But what he is saying is you don't see what they are preventing because it never happens in the first place, right? You don't see the rim mm. attempts because he's making sure they never even start to begin. So that would be my counter. It doesn't show up in the stats. All right. Good job, everyone. Let's do this. Let's talk about our friends at Bet Online, and then we'll talk about all defensive teams and we'll get out of here well before the Bulls game. So our friends at Bet Online are the number one source for all of your betting needs and sports info and odds. From all the latest sports developments, including this week's odds for the Masters Championship and the start to Major League Baseball season, Bet Online is your continued source for all your sports wagering needs, including live betting in your favorite Vegas casino and poker games. Uh, Joe Sway, I, just because I had to, the next Lakers head coach odd. Those odds are posted on betonline.ag. Can I interest you in any of the following people? In order, these are the odds. Fizdale, Snyder, yeah. Doc, Nick Nurse, Mike Brown, and then down towards the bottom, we got Phil Jackson, Coach K, and LeBron. Any of those names uh, interest you? <laughs> That's funny. Well, LeBron's already an assistant. Let's not bump him up here. I don't think he deserves that right now. Uh, you know, I mean, he's out of the season, but... I like Fizdo. Honestly, I liked him from the beginning. I'm I'm a big Fizdo. I like I I've been waiting for that another opportunity, that second opportunity or third opportunity for a head coach. You know, um, I I thought he was uh he was fired quickly. You know, in New York, yeah. and I I thought he should have uh he should have given more of a chance there. So um, I would love for that to happen. And I think he's guy and he he's been in that locker room long enough. Um, you know, to 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 earn everyone's respect. Oh, he already has it their respect. So I would love to see that happen. Is Fizdale's take that for data, right? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Him. okay. <laughs> that's cool. right. Yeah, then th- that's that was, my pick too. Yeah, that was a good one. <laughs> I forgot about that. It's super easy to get started over on Bet Online. So join today. Learn why everyone is saying Bet Online is the fastest and easiest way to wager on all the popular sports and games. Bet Online, where the game starts. All right. So, uh, Josue, you're here to help us pick all defensive teams. We yes. did all NBA I teams was... last week. Yeah. Man, I was I was a bit torn on this, so I'm really interested to see what you guys what you guys come up with. So we're gonna do what we did last time. We're gonna pitch you our versions of the team. We're gonna let you tell us what we did right, what we did wrong, and then you'll get the last word on what those teams look like. And then over on the Celtics Lab Twitter page, we'll have some polls up uh, concurrently with this podcast. How's that? Uh, a Sounds couple good. things of a couple things of note. Uh, the voting process is a little opaque in terms of positions so we did our best to kind of figure out who is eligible at what each team has two guards two forwards and uh, a center right and so that is uh, the model that we kind of have to to go with and hopefully we are correct about who is eligible for what position but if we got that wrong apologies in advance that's really the NBA's fault not our fault if we have time at the end we'll talk about uh, whether or not we are overemphasizing big men uh, when we think about defense, I think. And we talked a little bit about the smart narrative, but we can double back there if we have time. So without further ado, Dr. Quinn, you have first bite at the apple. Tell us your all NBA first defensive team, please. So a lot of the important things for me about all NBA kind of carry over to here. People who missed time, maybe lost a little bit in my estimation, uh, Teams, if they're playing for teams that aren't winning up to the expectations you would have of what they've done previously or what they were expected to be, uh, maybe didn't get as good of a look as people who did contribute to teams like the Cavs, for example, and Evan Mobley, I just could not, you know, take that into account, even if this is a rookie, I'm talking about Evan Mobley, who's one of one of the forwards I put on my team, um, I have Rob Williams on there. I have Smart on there. Yes, I have two Celtics. In fact, I have even more than two Celtics. I'll talk about that later. I have absolutely no qualms whatsoever taking not only the best defense in the NBA, but a historic defense in the NBA and giving them multiple players. 
I toyed with the idea of four, but I figured that I would never hear the end of it if I did. So I just went with three. The two that we have so far, again, are smart. Time Lord on first team. Uh, Michael Bridges and Matisse Thibel, uh, We He might not be eligible to play in Toronto, but he is eligible for first team because he's one of the most amazing defenders I can think of in recent memory. He literally just like appears in places that his body should not be able to get to and creates havoc for people in ways that I have just, there's, there's nothing I can really think of for a good com, uh, comparison for him. So between him and the success that Michael Bridges has been having uh, for his team combined with Evan Mobley or my first team. All right. So we got smart Thibel Bridges, Mobley in the timeline that's coming from Dr. Quinn. Hi, everyone. Just wanted to pause the action to tell you about our friends at Poker Chill, one of the best places for online poker gaming. Poker Chill is an online poker app with built in video chat. Host private poker games without using Zoom or other screens. Poker Chill has video chat built right into the game on your phone or tablet. A perfect way to hang out remote with your friends or family, and just as fun and real as live poker, all from your phone or tablet. Perfect for both beginners and advanced games. Best of all, it's super easy to get started and takes just three taps to set up. Poker Chill is available now for iPhone and iPad. Get started by downloading the Poker Chill app, and if you use our promo code CLAB, C L A B, your first five hours are completely free. Alex, you have something different. Alex, tell us your all defensive first team, please. So uh, there's a little bit of crossover, which is that both Dr. Quinn and I have Marcus Smart and Matisse Teibel as our backcourts. Um, I was a little torn on that second guard slot. Ultimately, I think the fact that Teibel's defense has basically kept Philly as an above average defense, even after the Harden trade, uh, when, I mean, Embiid has been good on defense, I think perhaps a little overhyped, but um, you know, that backcourt is James Harden hasn't defended for a minute now. Tobias Harris is not particularly great on defense. Tyrese Maxey is a really talented offensive player, but he's a little small and he can get pushed around. So to see Tybel's effort on the defensive end to keep Philly uh, on the upper echelon of defensive teams has been pretty impressive and ultimately gave him the nod for my second guard slot. Smart, we don't need to talk too much about. I mean, I haven't, uh, in case anybody was wondering, the bit that I was just doing about Rudy Gobert was in jest. I think Marcus Smart is pretty clearly my defensive player of the year. So we don't need to get too into that. Um, The forward spots were a little trickier. Ultimately, I went with Giannis as one of my forward spots. Um, And I think that case, so Giannis's metrics are good. Uh, His stats are good. They're maybe not as good as some other candidates. But for that, I look at the fact that Giannis has held this Bucks defense together without their best rim protector, Brooke Lopez, who's missed a significant amount of time. Um, He's been asked to shift around in their front court. He's been asked to defend players on the perimeter. Uh, He's got, you know, this gigantic wingspan. And I think the thing that really strikes me with Giannis is that he's become a much more intelligent defender this season than he has in years past. He's really starting to develop a knack for seeing angles, uh, for sealing dudes off and preventing them from getting into uh, spaces where they would feel comfortable on the floor. So I think Giannis, uh, I think... Maybe this is kind of a, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Maybe this is kind of uh, giving him the benefit of the doubt. Um, but ultimately, I think Giannis's defensive impact is gigantic. Um, for my other forward spot, I went with Jaron Jackson Jr. of the Memphis Grizzlies. Um, Jaron Jackson Jr.'s leap from his status as a second-year player to as a third-year player, I think, is maybe one of the most important and underrated stories that's happened in the NBA this year. I think Jaron Jackson has become not only the defensive linchpin for Memphis and the guy who can really make them a formidable team on that end. um, I think that he is like a borderline all-star player and I wouldn't be surprised if he makes the all-star team next year. Um, he, He, I actually listened to an interview with Jaron Jackson on the low post a couple of weeks back 
Um, and the way that he talks about defense, his positioning on the floor, what he's trying to get guys to do, um, how much he's worked on developing his timing to not just block shots, which he's currently, I believe, either leading the league or very close in, uh, but to contest shots and to force people into awkward and difficult shots. Like he really thinks about this stuff on a super high level, on a very advanced level for uh, somebody his age. And the Grizzlies have been such an incredible story, particularly as Ja Morant has missed now, I think like 30 games for them or pretty close to that. And they're still rock solid number two seed in a very tough Western conference. I think a big part of that is Jackson's leap on defense. Uh, For the center position, I know that there's been some controversy about this guy because he's missed some games, but I have Bam Adebayo as my center slot. Um, I think that Bam has kept a uh, Miami Heat defense afloat to the tune of them potentially clinching the number one seed in the Eastern Conference as early as their next game. Um, I think that, I mean, listen, as Celtics fans, we don't have to talk too much about what we see from Bam Adebayo on the defensive end of the floor. That guy's a nightmare to play against over and over and over again. Uh, That block was seared into my brain in the Eastern Conference Finals two years ago, and I don't think I'm ever going to forget it. And Bam's only gotten better since then. Um, I think this team... Yeah, I I think this Heat team is really well suited to maximize his defensive strengths, but ultimately there's a reason that at one point he was the leader in this defensive player of the year race. So that's my center for first team. All right, cool. Uh, Let me breeze through mine quickly, and mine comes with a little bit of trivia. Uh, I got smart. Obviously, I have smart. There's no need to to, uh, go through that anymore. I have Derek White on my first team as the other guard. Uh, I'm not being a homer here. I just, I went through the data this wow. afternoon. and Celtics fan over here. No, I'm just kidding. Well, so we were talking about this <laughs> off, off air is that, so defensive metrics are tough because they're ultimately team statistics, except for a few things here and there. But his data all season long, going back to his Spurs days, keeps him and that, <clears throat> that cream of the crop defensively. So it's got to be something he's doing, I think. Um, and yeah, if you go through... I like to use 538, but if you go through like really any of the advanced defensive metrics, he's right up there with the guards. Um, so maybe the homerism is pushing him into on the onto the first team, but I think he's he's a worthy candidate of either of the two teams. And come on down. I mean, the, he's not playing defense against that hairline, but everything else is uh, fantastic. Um, I have Giannis. Alex said it fine. In 2020, Giannis became the third player to win MVP and defensive player of the year in the same season. Does anyone know the other yeah. two? You know him, Sway? MVP. What is MVP and what? And defensive player oh, of the defensive year. Player, defensive player of the year. Uh, I can give you years if that's helpful. Yeah. What do you got? Uh, 88 and 94. 88 and 90. It wasn't Larry. No, Larry didn't do it, right? Larry won defensive player of the year one time. In 94, it was Sakim. Hakeem, right. I should have known that in 94, right, right. He won, like, everything that year. And then in uh, yeah. 88, it was Michael Jeffrey Jordan. All right, anyways, yeah. uh, I also have Jaron Jackson Jr., um, Alex, well done. And then I have Rudy Gobert as my center. Uh, I'm sorry. He's so good at defense. He, The Jazz aren't good at defense other than him. He has an impossible job, and he does it really, really well. I don't think the defensive scheme is suited for him, and it's not really his fault. I think if he got to do what – Bam gets to do in the heat role, he would be just as good or better. So um, I'm willing to be wrong about that, but I have Gobert as my setter, which is super unpopular. Uh, okay, Dr. Sway, you have heard all of our uh, ideas, all of our opinions. Give us your all, what is it, all defensive first team? I think I said it backwards last time. Okay. All right. Yeah, I, I do that sometimes too. <laughs> all right. Um, I'll just go right through it. Uh, I was torn on one of them, but um Marcus I got Bridges I, I just really like what he's doing in Phoenix man especially without uh without Chris Paul out there for most of the season just holding down the fort uh, Phoenix is one of those teams where I just just can't help but like that kind of scrappy underdog you know vibe I guess that they that they put out and especially for guys like us covering the you know Celtics we we know all about that so I I feel like that defensive intensity man Full disclosure, I would love to see a Celtics Suns NBA Finals thing. Well, that that's just me. But anyways, um, yeah, I think he's a big part of that. So I I wanted to give him props in this one, man. This season for sure. Um, Giannis is, 
I have my three, I guess. Um, uh, I got Bam. I was torn between Bam and Jared Jackson, man. I really was. Um, it's just that what Jackson does for that team and with the, the run that Memphis has, has been has been on, and especially when you think about how many games Bam missed. Um, so that's the part that I was really torn on. And um, at center, I think Rod's going to get his, man. But uh, I had to give it to Rudy, man. I don't know. I just had to. I was torn. I, I had. I should have flipped the coin. Maybe Rod would have won. But, yeah, that, that's my five. All right. Uh, and for what it's worth, I don't agree with it. But Bam is eligible at the forward position. So that, that was legal. Because um, that's what he was last season, right? I was thinking that. I mean, it's I guess he's a basketball reference and it has him uh, positionally this season. Last season, I think he was like 30% or something like that at forward. Uh, this season, I think they have him over 90%, like 98 or 97% at center. So I'm yeah, so he has, he's locked in. So he's locked into the center. I'm not I mean, sure. I think, the, I think the league would allow for forward, but it, it's the, the you know same. What? I mean, you know what? With that being said, Justin, he's going to be my five. I'll put Jaren Jackson number four, man. Cool. At the four. Because look, J- Jackson, man. He's just like you guys talk. I forget who said, but the, the, the timing thing, like he does his research, man. And, and there's a reason why not only does he lead the league in blocks per game, but he leads the league by total blocks by like 50 blocks. <laughs> like he's he's there's a reason for that. And uh, of course, the Memphis Grizzlies has just been riding with that and, and what John Moran's been doing this year. man. they're just that that fun dark horse in the Western Conference. So, yeah, I'm going to do I'm going to shuffle it out the, that way then, I guess. Yeah. Uh, were you in the garden for that um, Grizzly Celtics game a few weeks ago? I was, yeah. So, yeah, that was set. That, uh, just as a fan, unbelievable, unbelievable. Yeah, game. that was that was incredible, right? Especially this season, man. Like that was one of them, one of the favorite. Ones. All right, uh, let's do the second team now, Alex. You get to go first. Tell us who you have on your second team, please. Sure. Um, so I will start off with my backcourt. Um, I gave my first defensive backcourt nod to Drew Holiday, uh, one of my favorite players for many years now, actually. I just really like the way that guy plays. Um, so Drew has had, by his standards, a little bit of a down year, actually. I think um, offensively, he's definitely not been as good as he's been in years past. And defensively he's been okay he's he, he's definitely had seasons like last season he was I think notably better on the defensive end that being said when you go through the available guards and I looked at Derek White I looked at a couple other candidates um I just think that Drew the fact that Drew consistently guards often uh one through at least one through four and is often assigned with at at least for some stretches of the game, taking on uh, the opposing team's best player, particularly when that is a backcourt player, I think should matter a lot in these discussions. I also think the fact that the Bucks held the fort down without Brooke Lopez and with some pretty significant roster turnover, um, Drew, Drew is a big part of that as well. I can't give all credit to Giannis, even though I think he might have been the biggest part of that. Um, so I have Drew for my first guard spot. For my second guard spot, I was pretty torn on this, so I did a little bit of numbers uh, and I took a look at what was there, and I went with Fred Van Vliet, um, who mm, I think I like that. I think he has a deserved All Star case uh, this year. He's been pretty terrific on both ends for the Raptors, and what really impresses me about Van Vliet is that um, he just never backs down from anybody ever. I mean, like this guy truly plays defense with no fear at all against any matchup. Um, I think the Raptors have a great defensive culture building. uh, And so in general, it's probably fair to say that their defense is more the result of a team effort than it is one individual player. But Drew is the tip, uh, sorry, uh, Fred Van Vliet is the tip of the spear. Everything that happens on the floor that's going up against the Raptors goes through him. Uh, When defenses are looking to attack the Raptors, he's usually the first line of defense, and he's been terrific at that. So I have Van Vliet there. Um, So this guy is a controversial pick for my forward spot um, in large part because of games played. I, I, Took that into consideration, but ultimately didn't care because um, when he was on the floor, he was not just a 
like all defense worthy guy. He was the best defensive player in the league and uh, was probably headed to winning that before he got hurt. So I went with Draymond as my first forward spot on the second team. Uh, I had to give the nod to Mikhail Bridges for my other forward spot. He's been great. We've talked a little bit about him. And then for my last center spot, you know, considering that I am the world's first and foremost Rudy Gobert hater, I could not put him on my defensive team. And so I went with Robert Williams for all of the reasons that Justin laid out earlier. Being the world's biggest Rudy hater is there's a lot of Rudy haters out there. So that's, that's crowded real estate. Is right. this COVID, is this COVID based or? Uh, it's COVID based. It's, I don't think he's that good based. It's all, it's a whole oh, mess so, of things. So the COVID thing was like the tip of the eye. Like that was like, okay. Th- oh, that, was the, that was the final straw. Right. Ca- crossing the Rubicon, so to speak. Alex hates <laughs> Europeans. Oh, all right, man. Uh, that's Dr. Gonna, Quinn. That's, that's, there's a lot of them coming in now, man. <laughs> yeah. And the league is better butt. for it. Thank you very much. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Uh, the I'll MVP candidates. Money. Yeah, I, I mean, know, they're not seriously. all from like, Europe. They're all not all three. from Europe, but they're like they're, they're not. You know, they're not from. They're not from America. They're none of them. Most of them are. You know. Matisse Tybel is Australian, and he's on my first team. Come on, right. killing me. I said Europeans. Anyways. Yeah, he's not European. Giannis. Oh wait, is by on. the oh, wait, hold on. <laughs> by the way, I said Larry. I meant, I meant MJ. I don't know why I said that. I was like, I knew MJ was the old, one of the few people who did it, but that's all right. Go ahead. I was just thinking about that. I was like, you said Larry. Larry, I know he made a couple of all defensive teams, but he definitely didn't win defensive player of the year. My bad. <laughs> oh, good. So I'll try to keep it as short as possible since we have a Bulls game to watch. Uh, for me, Drew Holiday for the same reason to start the second team backcourt. Uh, Derek White also for the reasons laid out. Uh, I had, if I had a vote, I wouldn't have voted this person because Jaron Jackson Jr. deserves to be on one of my teams. But I just had to put Herb Jones somewhere. So I put him on my second team at one of the forward spots. Um, If you don't know about him, you will. So don't worry about that too much. Uh, Also, Giannis Adebayo. Adebayo got bumped down. He deserves to be on first team in terms of how he has played. But for me, you know, availability is key. You are not defending shit if you are, excuse my language, uh, if you are not on the court. So he's on my second team. All right. And just quickly, I'll do mine. I also have Drew. I have uh, DeJounte Murray, again, maybe it's a Spurs thing, but the numbers just seem to really like him. Uh, I wish I watched more Spurs games this season, but I quite frankly haven't, but the numbers are there. And when I've watched, I mean, it's his offense that catches my eye, but the defense is real. Uh, I wish we had more time, but I put Tatum. I think the eye test uh, is a strong case. I think the data say some uh, pretty interesting things. I think that Tatum could make this team I think that he could arguably be in the top 10 to 15 most impactful defensive players this season. So I have Tatum and I also put Herb Jones. I wish I knew more about this guy because Holy crap. Does he jump off the page at least statistically? Mm. And then I have the time Lord uh, as my second team center. So if you're keeping score at home, that's four Celtics for me. And I would consider adding Al Horford somewhere. I was going to say um, I had Horford and I took him off because yeah, I just don't want to, to just hear about it constantly so yeah so if, if, if bridges <laughs> or bam if, if bridges or bam make it i'm not losing sleep i think that that's legit but i do i don't think that smart and time lord are homer picks i think that there's real arguments there all right dr sway second team go all right second team i got i got rob in there but you know how i made that switch earlier i, I don't know yeah. if i can put like the four or not and put um yeah, I think he can. I, I don't. I don't know about the positions, but he plays it often. I mean, it's hard to tell him. because a lot of the games, you know, they 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 switch off. With, you know, yeah, he's the guy the with the four on the perimeter or not. Yeah, right? yeah. So okay, let's just go. I'm I'm rolling with it. <laughs> I'll put him at the four. I'll put um. So that will put Gobert at the center, right mm-hmm. center position. I got Draymond. I got um, uh, Thibel, Matisse Thibel. I, man, he's just. That that's a guy like like look if this thing happens the Celtics face the, the Sixers like that's one of those guys like he's gonna really have his hands full and and you're here for that right like, you want to see guys like Tatum and Brown you want to see what they're made of on that, that spotlight on that stage against against a guy like that but um he, he's been solid and and um Duante Murray yeah Duante Murray is my is my in my backcourt so I mean I would say you guys got uh, let, let's let's try to do like a general like how do we do this right I mean if we had to combine everyone's first team you guys are pretty much on the same page just minus a few 
a few uh, positions here. What is the power forward and center, I guess? What, what do you guys think? I mean, we all well, have smart, smart. Smart's locked in between, the, I feel like it's between Bridges and, and Thibel. What do you guys think? Yeah, I, I, I'm I the one who. I feel like you guys just split Bridges. on. Just, yeah. I think you guys just split on that. So, this, so we put Thibel up I'm there? Good with, I'm good with Bridges. I mean, Bridges rocks his defense. And the Suns probably deserve. Uh, a, a candidate on there, so we could have that. What, what we're, we're going to do is we're going to put it on Twitter and let the very smart people okay. on Twitter.com uh, uh, sort gotcha. it out. I thought, you, I thought you guys wanted me to just like put, put yeah, that you put me on. Well, the spot give here. us your grades. I mean, combine, the best. you know, combine. I thought you were going to say like combine all your responses and, and you know, <laughs> never no, that's, that's why that's I thought you guys do it. <laughs> that's for the Twitter nerds to decide. But if you want to tell one right. of us they did the best job at this, you can. <laughs> um alex read yours again real quick i, I was i was yeah. feeling it mine's a couple yeah. of things so for first team smart tybal Giannis jackson at bio for second team drew holiday van vliet draymond green mikhail bridges and rob i think i'm automatically disqualified by not including jaron jackson jr i mean <laughs> herb jones does deserve yeah. to be on an all defensive team at some point but maybe i'm being a little premature here Ken, what's yours again? I'm, I'm, I'm thinking it's Alex, but I'll let you, I'll let you read yours again. I'll I had <laughs> Smart, Derek White, Giannis, Jaron Jackson Jr., and Gobert. And then I had Drew, uh, Jonte Murray, Tatum, Herb Jones, and the Time Lord. That's right. All right, I got to go with Alex. I got to go with Alex. Right, All right, thanks for coming on. <laughs> 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 He's like, you guys are like, man, Alex doesn't even... I doesn't even talk to you. Damn it. <laughs> just kidding. I think the Van Fleet pick sealed it for me. That was inspired. I mean, when yeah. you see, when you hear my list, it's, it's pretty close. It's pretty, pretty identical. Just personality mirroring is what he did. All right. Yeah. Uh, Joe, Joe Sweep of Arm, you come to us from heavy.com. You are a CLNS brethren. We can find you at the Cedric Maxwell podcast, the garden report and all over the place. Thanks for coming on. This is great. And, um, we would love to have you back sometime soon. Yeah, let's do it, guys. This was this was fun, man, for sure. You know what? Especially when they uh, when they officially do the uh, the All NBA, whatever other list you guys want to do. You want to do top top five, top ten? That's always well, interesting. I actually did that recently with on on Causeway Street, another podcast of mine, right? <laughs> At CLNS Media, shameless plug. Um, we did the top twenty five list, which is something we do every single year, but we didn't do it last year. And uh, to be short with you guys, it was it was a lot of debating because <laughs> you can imagine. Sure. So that was that was really fun. If you guys end up doing that, man, that, that that's a lot of fun. All right, maybe we'll do a crossover pod. Um, well, we're gonna talk about whether or not the Celtics should trade for LeBron this offseason. So we'll have you back maybe for that. Got us. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm here that, for that. I'm here for that. <laughs> yes, yes. All right. On that bombshell, some of us have dates with uh, the Celtics and Bulls. I have a date with Wings over Somerville. Uh, so thanks for listening, and oh, we will catch you all spot. later. Mm-hmm. All right. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> later. See you. Thanks, guys.